Good afternoon. Welcome and uh, welcome back to Reflection and uh, Prior Time at this Friday noon. And today is the last Friday of October. Today is the last Friday of October. Last week, uh, we reflected on do not worry. Do not worry based on Luke chapter 12, verses 22 to 31. And I want to read the text today as well, the same uh, text. Luke chapter 12, 22 to 20, 31, 22 to 31. And in the New International Version, it says, Do not worry. That's the title of the whole um, segment. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn. Yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the lilies grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you of you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after all such things, and your Father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. This is the living word of God, and God's people say, thanks be to God. So Jesus prescribes a medicine for our worries, struggles and challenges. Do not worry. That is the medicine, the spiritual medicine. At the same time, it's easier said than done. You know, last week uh, I did say that often we hear during this time of election, during this time of worldwide pandemic, this one particular word, I am under stress. I am stressful. I am stressed out. When we ask people to describe the reasons why they are stressed out, why they are under great stress, they say that isolation, rejection, despair, and misunderstandings of the reality because we are bombarded with all kinds of information and mostly those information is really confusing us. So misunderstanding, these are the major causes for our stress. Uncertainty is added to the fuel. So we go through all kinds of emotional struggles, anxiety, anger, grief, guilt. Right now, in addition to world pandemic and national politics and uh, elections, we also come across uh, natural disasters. 
I believe this morning there was an earthquake somewhere in the world and uh, the western part of the United States is going through a um, lot of uh, wildfire. So many things contribute to our stress and stress level. And Jesus is inviting us to consider his promise to consider his wisdom, do not worry. And Jesus is giving us two illustrations. Last week we looked at the first illustration, consider the ravens, the crows. And today I want to focus briefly about the second illustration, and that is consider the lilies. Consider how the lilies grow and present themselves in our gardens, in our backyard. What is worry? It's worth talking about the word worry from etymological perspective, from the language perspective. I understand the word worry originally came from uh, 13th century, which means to strangle. Then later on, 14th century, the, the meaning of the word worry changed from to strangle to stay. I'm sorry, to slay or to kill or to injure by biting and shaking the throat. And it was a direct reference to an animal, like a dog or a wolf. You know, they try to catch another animal, and sometimes they are also attack the human being. And they try to choke or bite or injure the throat. That's what worry means, what he meant in the 14th century. Then later on in the 18th century, worry meant mental distress, mental trouble, causing anxiety to keep arising from troubles of all kinds. And that's what we are going through. We are being troubled. We are anxious. We are in distress. There are two major troubles or worries before us. One is in less than a week, four or five days, we have the United States uh, election, which worries us, all of us, about the future of this nation. What's going to happen? The second worry has been traveling with us for quite some time, for months, that is worldwide pandemic. The future of everything that we were and we are used to. The future of this nation, the future of the world, the future of everything that we are used to. We cannot simply sweep both worries under a carpet and pretend as though there is nothing around us. These two worries, worldwide pandemic and the U.S. election, are before us. They are the current reality. But at the same time, both current realities are beyond the control of individuals. In the midst of these worries and current realities, through Luke chapter 12, Jesus is saying to us, and inviting us with a gentle voice, do not worry. Consider how the lilies grow. Consider the flower lily. In other words, Jesus is inviting us to be stress fighters, worry fighters,
troubled fighters. If and when, when we don't fight with stress, worry, and trouble, then they will take over our lives and they will start fighting with us. There is a, a story too. Um, it's a story, maybe I should say a myth. It's not in the Bible. Jesus' favorite flower was lily. Somewhere I read, it's not in the scripture. Maybe that's why he said, consider how the lilies grow. Look at the lilies and turn away from worries and troubles and stress or stressfulness. Let me quickly share with you some thoughts about uh, the lily flower. In the biblical sense, lily flower or lilies, they mean God is abundant. With God there is no scarcity. God is a God of blessing and God does not bless us with little things but God always has promised to bless us abundantly, generously, always more. Blessings are in God's store. Flower lily also means God is my oath. I can depend on God because he is a God of covenant. Lily flower all also means it's a symbol of purity. Mostly lily flowers, I believe that there are many other colors in different countries, but mostly when we think of lily flower, it's about the white. And white means it's a purity. In Hebrew language, lily is the short form of the Hebrew name Elizabeth. So those of you who have your name as Elizabeth, it could also mean Lily. But those of you who have the name Lily or Lillian, that means you're also Elizabeth. And we have a number of Elizabeths in the Bible when it refers to lily flower. For Christians, for Christianity, lily flower represents rebirth and hope. And that's why lily flowers are always associated with resurrection and Christian faith. A fresh life and new life and rebirth Jesus has died, Jesus is risen, and Jesus will come again. And that's the affirmation of our Holy Communion service. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In some traditions, churches are decorated with lily flowers for Easter Sunday celebrations. White lily flowers are also chosen for weddings and funerals because it refers to purity and commitment and rebirth. When the couple stands in the presence of God and in the presence of God's people for making commitment to begin a new life together, to make a commitment in the presence of God, in the presence of God's people. So couples, they make a choice of their flowers and mostly lily flowers because they represent commitment and a new life. And why people choose to have lily flowers for funerals? Because the person has passed away from the earthly life. But the hope is a day will come that the person who has deceased will be brought back to life. The person will be resurrected. 
on the day of resurrection. They also understand that they accept the continents of Africa and Australia, all other continents have lily flowers. Those days, Egyptians and Romans, they used lily flower a lot because both of their culture, Roman culture, Egyptian culture, they believed that lily flower was so sacred and uh, they used lilies to fill their pillows so that they will sleep well with sweet and innocent smell all through the night. So Jesus is inviting us as we face the worldwide pandemic for months, as we face US election in the next week or so, Jesus is inviting us not to worry. Do not worry because his illustration for us, God's people, to consider, to remember, and to think about the lily flower because of the following reasons. Let me share those reasons and then we move into a time of prayer. Lilies, lily flower reminds us the following. Yes, humanly speaking, we worry but let us remind ourselves that we worship a God of abundance, a God of blessings. Lily flowers uh, remind us, humanly speaking, we worry, but we have an option of smelling and receiving the power of healing for our diseases, for our sickness, and we continue to pray, Jesus, heal the world. Jesus, heal the nation. Lily flowers and lilies remind us, humanly speaking, we may worry, but we can, we can erase worry from our mind, from our lives, and replace with Christian faith. In other words, Lily flowers remind us to be resilient, to strengthen our Christian faith so that the more our faith is stronger, our lives can handle any kind of worry. Lily flowers and lilies remind us that we as human beings worry a lot, but we can renew our commitment our commitment to God, our commitment to care for God's people. And God will take care of our worries and struggles and troubles. Lily flowers and lilies remind us, humanly speaking, we might worry, but let us think about God's provisions for our lives today tomorrow and every day. What a beautiful invitation from Jesus from Luke chapter 12. Do not worry. Consider the ravens. Consider the lily flowers. Think about them and remind yourself that God is with us and God will take care of our worries and stresses and troubles. Yes, humanly speaking, we continue to worry. The U.S. election, the world pandemic, family situations, family problems, many uncertainties before us. But do not worry. Consider the lilies, the lily flower. Amen. I invite us to... Uh, Think about these 15 prayers for COVID-19 that we have been praying for. So once again, I want to remind all of us about these 15 
points, prayer points for COVID-19. Eradication of the virus, progress in effective treatment, suffering of our normal work, isolation and stay at home and its implications, kids and youth who have lost months of learning opportunities and their future schooling, amount of pain involved at all levels of the entire humanity, needed resources, economical, medical, scientific and academic resources, people who are attempting to take, take their own lives due to high levels of stress and trouble and worry, healing and recovering of all patients, especially COVID-19 patients, from our own church context, uh, the number of people who are our church members and through our church connections, the number keeps increasing. We need to be upholding all of them in our prayers. Gift of technology and social media for communications. The state of Wisconsin and many other states our goal is to flatten or suppress the curve. Unemployment and poverty level and lack of supplies, especially food supplies. Recovery of economy for global and national scale. Healthcare system and all the people who are part of the healthcare system. Our church preparing for such storms and calm. They also invite us to lift up our own personal needs, spiritual, <coughs> emotional, mental, and physical needs of all kinds, and especially remembering our family members who are dealing with many situations during this time of pandemic. I invite all of us to continue to pray for U.S. elections scheduled for next Tuesday. Let us move into a time of uh, liturgy for midday prayer. Jesus, our Savior, teaches your ways. Our hope is in you all the day long. God of mercy, this midday moment of rest is your welcome gift. Bless the work we have begun and make good its defects. And let us finish it in a way that pleases you. Grant this through Christ. Lord of all eagerness, Lord of all faith, whose strong hands were skilled at the plain and the lake. Be there at our labors and give us, we pray. Your strength in our hearts, Lord, at the noon of the day. Those of steadfast mind you keep in peace, in peace because they trust in you. In returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and trust shall be your strength. Strong is the love embracing us. And faithful, O God, from morning to night. God be with all of us uh, till we meet again and thank you for joining me this afternoon for a time of reflection and prayer and God's blessings of good health and strength and take care by now.